samples. They don't get shocked knowing that this is coming from their own country. Actually, they do every time. And that is the thing that I want to impart in them, that we can actually grow our own. We can feed ourselves. Why are they shocked? Because we are so used to uh, depending on other countries to doing things for us, you know. So we don't believe in our own. And that is the narrative, the colonization narrative that we have adapted as a people. And we want to change that. We are great people. Africa, our motherland, is a beautiful place to be. You know, the funny thing is that whenever you're in Africa, the feeling of of, of, of acceptance and being with your own people. I don't have to worry about uh, racial profiling or being harassed on the streets like I did in America. You're you know, racial you're, profiling you. Racial profiling happens in the West, you know that. So just being with your own people and doing the things that you love and seeing it making an impact is amazing. Good morning from South Sudan, the world's youngest country. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana baby, right here in the farm. You know what? I told you guys that I was born in a village. I'm also a farmer. So farming videos are my all-time favorite videos that I enjoy doing. I've been telling each and everyone out there that it's time for each and every young African out there to own a farm because 60% of the world arable land is here in Africa. So why are you guys wearing suits, sitting in banks as if um, you've made it and leaving all these things for others? I mean, in Africa, they even train us to say that only poor people can own a farm. So if you ask so many Africans do you want to be a farmer, they will tell you, hell no, because I don't want to be poor. Agriculture is the future. I mean, can you believe that this farm right here belongs to a young woman who lived in America and she decided to leave America and then come here to be a farmer? I know some of you might think that something is really wrong with her, but hey, we need to talk to her and find out if something is really wrong with her. You know what? Do me a favor because this video is mind blowing. So all you need to do to help me is to like this video. Don't forget to share share to friends and family please and help us reach 800,000 subscribers come with me let's go talk to her hi hi what am i it's good to see you good to see you too oh my goodness because of you i have to fly all the way from accra to juba that is crazy you are an inspiration you are too has anyone ever told you that people have told me that before but do you know that you are an inspiration to so many people out there? I believe I am because you're here. Oh my goodness. Tell me, who are you and what's your name? Sure, my name is Joy Ladu and I am an agripreneur here in Juba, South Sudan. Your name is Joy? Yes. Now I think you can, can, can you hold your hand. <laughs> can you measure the joy in my heart? <laughs> this is the joy that I feel whenever I see young Africans like you winning. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And I think you need to help me inspire so many young Africans out there. Mm. Tell me, how did this journey all started? Were you born and raised in here? No, I was not born and raised here. I was born in South Sudan, okay. but then my family moved to Kenya when I, when I was barely two weeks old because of the family, civil war. Your family moved because of the civil war? Yes, my family moved to Kenya because of the civil war and I pretty much grew up in Kenya. Okay. Yes. Sasa. Poa, <laughs> Nikok, South uh, Sudan. Santi Sana, uh, Unafana Nini. Uh, Nina Lima. Oh, Nina Lima. Yes. Don't, don't go far. Uh, from Kenya, what happened? So I studied in Kenya, uh, did my secondary school education, and then I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to go and do my post high school in Norway for two years. Okay. Um, and then after that, I was also lucky again to get another scholarship to go to America. So I went to America to do my uh, university, my undergraduate. How long did you stay in America? I stayed in America for eight years. Come on, I mean, postgraduate? Yes. It's just two years? Yes. You ended up staying for 
eight years. Yes. What happened? Um, tried to really figure out myself after education. You know, sometimes you, you just want to, to find yourself out because at that point I actually realized that what I had studied, because by career training I did public health, specifically infectious disease epidemiology. Mm. Um, so after, after finishing my postgrad, um, I was conflicted. I feel like I had a passion deep within me that I had restricted for the longest time. Whoa. Yes. And that passion is? That passion is agriculture. And you decided to leave America and then come to South Sudan to start farming? Yes. I don't know if I can check if something is wrong with you. I mean, can I check that? <laughs> they say great things are actually done by people who are, you would call them crazy. You know, you don't have to be similar. You don't have to do or follow a path that everybody follows. Sometimes you just have to be different. And in difference, you can actually make an impact. So, I mean, if you want to be a farmer, definitely you grew up in Kenya, right? Yes. So why not Kenya, but decided to come to South Sudan? Because this is my ancestral land. There is something so strong about home. You know, I believe that wherever you go in the world, your home is always going to call you back. It doesn't matter. So South Sudan is the land of my ancestors. I decided to come back and be with my people because when I'm here, I feel so much joy, you know? Yes. When you're here, you feel so much joy just like <laughs> that. That's impressive. You know, I, I really want to know, is farming capital intensive? Actually, no, not at all. Starting a garden here in South Sudan is not capital intensive at all. You just need a little bit of money to get started with your equipment and of course money to, to hire employees, to get your seeds and also put down the system for irrigation. Do you own this land? I do not own this land. Right now I am leasing the land, but hopefully in the near future I want to, to, to own this land. How many years? Uh, just one, 12 more months and I'll be able to, to own this land hopefully. But I I mean, meeting the people to lease the land to you, was it difficult? Um, it was not very difficult uh, because the leasing process, but the owning part is very difficult. Mm. Uh, it wasn't difficult to lease it because they were really excited about the whole idea of gardening, you know, and gardening also of farming in a completely different con context from how they're used to, okay. you know, so it wasn't very difficult. Uh, the locals here plus the, the leaders were very open and they really embraced the, the, the entire well, idea. I, I really wanted to know which year did you move to South Sudan? I actually officially moved to South Sudan in 2019, okay. but before then I would just come and visit and go back. You come and visit and go back? Yes, I would come and visit. Whoa. Yeah. So I want to understand, yeah, when you move back, why you decided to start a farm? I mean, why agriculture in the first place? There's so many things. I mean, let me understand. Did you learn agriculture in school? I did not study agriculture. By so, career training, I'm actually, I studied public health. I studied um, infectious disease epidemiology. So why Greek? My story is actually a little bit long. Uh, in 2017, I attended a conference on emerging trends in agriculture in Africa. Mm. And during one of the lectures, the, um, the, the person who was hosting actually had a very interesting topic. Um, uh, there were three countries that were being featured, uh, case studied, and South Sudan was one of them. Okay. And uh, the way they had featured South Sudan, they labeled it uh, a sleeping giant in agriculture and during that case study the guy actually gave us a small activity in the lecture room he said okay everyone should go to their phones and try to type up you know agriculture or farming in Africa or in South Sudan and see what you get I was really astounded because all the imagery and the portrayals that I saw on on the internet were really pretty much of starving children you know military and it really broke my heart for a second. So what I did was immediately after that uh, conference, I decided to fly straight to Juba, South Sudan. That was Whoa. in 2017. I came to come and actually see the situation and do my market research and see what exactly is going on. When I arrived in Juba, shockingly, I did not see any starving children on the streets as the media was showing. I did not see, of course there were military, but it was not to that extent as it was being Portrayed. Portrayed. And then another thing that I saw in the market for sure was the fact that there was heavy dependence on importation. We were pretty much importing more than 80% of all the fresh produce in, in, the, in the country Whoa. from outside. Yeah, sometimes some of the produce were being imported all the way from India and Brazil. And it really got me to thinking, you know, 
Why are we importing? Well, we have vast arable land and we have resources. We have our majestic Nile just by our fingertips. Whoa. Why don't we use that? So that was an opportune moment for me to really try to bridge the gap of food insecurity in my home country, you know? You, you're trying to say that the inspiration came from the fact that your country is important food stuffs? Yes, my country is importing at least 80% of food from other countries, from neighboring countries and all the way from Brazil and India. And yet we are capable. We have the, we have the skills and the resources you know, to, 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 to feed ourselves. So let me know, what are you growing in here? Right now we have a variety of vegetables. We do have kale, we have coriander, we have zucchini, we have uh, eggplants, we have green peppers, and what else do we have? We have okra. It's really uh, a favorite among our you, locals. You didn't mention we have mangoes. Oh. You know, <laughs> in this country, since I came, two things that I found in this country is mango and cattle. See, there you go. See, I mean, like, I don't have to look far. <laughs> everywhere. Ma mangoes everywhere. Along the Nile, you see mangoes everywhere. But hey, l let me tell you something. I feel like Africa is just the same everywhere. Yes. This is where we do our cooking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, we all do this. I mean, you go to the farm. Yes. What are you cooking? We're cooking beans today. Ah, no. Beans, yes. Beans doesn't look so local, man. We're cooking <laughs> beans. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. She'll fix it. You see? That's how it is. You have cassava here? Uh, we do have some few cassava, but it's not yet that season for Jeez. cassava. Oh my goodness. So, yes. like, if it's not that season, then how do you irrigate your crops? We actually, like I told you, we are so blessed by Mother Nature that we do have the Nile right adjacent to us. So we pump water right straight from the Nile and we irrigate our... Which means the Nile is saving you during dry seasons. Uh, yes. Because we are currently in dry season in here, right? Yes, that's so correct. So you actually use the Nile. Yes. Can I check it out? Absolutely. Thank you. So Maya, this Whoa. is where we pump our water Whoa. right from the Nile, as you can see. You know, we got a generator and our piping system that pushes the water straight to the garden. Amazing. Yeah. So which means you don't even have to pay for water. We don't have to pay for the water. See, this is what makes Africa blessed. You but know? it's not being portrayed out there. All the narrative that is out there is about war-torn Africa. Africa devastated by diseases and poverty and hunger and all those kind of stuff. And that's why I want people like you to help me change the narrative. You don't think I need to help you Get a YouTube channel? I would love that. What will you call your channel? Uh, that is still in the making. You, you know what? There's going to be a description. Uh, uh, uh. There's going to be a channel link in the description. We don't have an, any idea of the name that we're going to call the channel, but I know that she's going to have a channel right here. So hey, do me a favor. Go to your description box. Go click on it. Go to your YouTube channel. Go and subscribe and tell her that what Maya told you to subscribe. Thank you so much. <laughs> You know what? Yeah. I'm walking barefooted because I want to connect with nature in here, you know. It feels so good to be back again in the farm. Yes. But I just want to ask you, how does it feel to be a farmer? That is a very interesting question, mm. Maya. You know, there's something really therapeutic, as you would say, about being a farmer and just mm. being out in the nature, connecting with Mother Earth. You know, it is very therapeutic. And then also as a farmer, really to see the hard work of your hands, you know, being able to feed other people when you plant your seed until all the way and nurture it all the way to selling it, it, it gives you a sense of fulfillment, you know, and then also you're really contributing directly towards problems in the, in the, in the country, problems in the economy. In Africa, yes. we tend to say that um, farmers are supposed to be poor, but I don't think you're poor. I think uh, the idea of poverty is a mindset. Thank you. It is a mindset. You don't, poverty is, is something that you actually, you're taught, you know, you're taught. You can do anything to improve your life and you don't have to do the normal things that, uh, or the status quo that people teach you, that you have to go to school and become a doctor, become an engineer to become rich. Wealth, you can create it from anything, oh from the passion goodness. that you ha that you have. Oh you know, you just need you just need a plan, a passion, and you can become you can have all C that you can want. Can I hug you? <laughs> can I hug you, please? Come. I feel like you spoke from the soul, and Thank you. it really touched me. Mm. I mean, growing up in Africa, mm. we're told to go to school. Yes. 
get married, mm -hmm. get a job, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. Build your house, have your cars, you've made it in life, mm -hmm. right? We have so many young Africans out there who think like that. Mm -hmm. For Based on your experience, do you think there's something wrong with our education system? I would actually say there is something uh, concretely wrong with our education system. But that's why I want to give my message to every young African out there. Dare to be different. Dare not to follow the path or the ways that everybody is follow. You can be different and carve your way out and still make a living and be happy and make an impact. You know, you can do that. You can do that. How many people have you employed in here? I do employ uh, 12 people, but we also do have uh, volunteers who come through the training process. Training process? Yes, so we do train. you are training people Yes, too. I do train uh, the local community and then I do have staff from other organizations that come. We train them here for a period of over a month, you know, impart them with skills so that they can go out there, establish their own gardens if they can. You know, the more people get into this, the better for the country, the better for the economy so that we don't need to depend on our country or our government to support us, you know, and empower the youth. They are the future of any country. So that's what I do. I focus mostly on youth and women and I train them so that they can also go and start their own and feed their families. And when a youth is empowered, a youth of a nation is empowered or the women of the community is empowered, then we'll be able to actually break the tendency of dependency on aid and other organizations from coming and help and, and, and really feeding us. You know, it's really building resilience and then also self-sufficiency for the long term because for instance, with COVID-19, think about it, if the borders are closed and we are really relying and depending on other countries to provide us with food. Who's going to feed us? Really, our, our well-being is dependent on the mercy of other countries. So that's why I do that, to empower my own people. Self-sufficient now. And resilience. The major challenge that you face when you started establishing this in here? Just like any other business, the beginning few years to months, uh, months to years are usually very difficult. Um, for me really is uh, because this project here in South Sudan is actually a brainchild of another project that I have in, 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 in Uganda. Okay. So, you know, when as an entrepreneur you have tried something and have proven that it's actually viable, then getting to, 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 to have it peak speed is usually difficult or to convince other stakeholders that this thing is actually viable and we can actually um, we can expand it. That has, all, that has been the biggest uh, challenge for me. Talking about expansion, where do we see um, Ubuntu farms? By the way, I even forgot to ask you what is the name of your farm, but that's Ubuntu, right? <laughs> yes, it is called Ubuntu Farm. And, and why Ubuntu? Ubuntu because we cherish the idea of togetherness as a people. One person cannot build a, a, a nation. So as a community, as an entire community, we can build our nation. That's why I call it Ubuntu. Where do we see Ubuntu farms in the next five years? In the next five years, we see Ubuntu farm uh, along the entire uh, value chain process. Right now we are producing, but we also want to enter into, into processing. Uh, for instance, we'd like to have a, a, a greenhouse here. If we get a greenhouse, we're definitely going to increase our production at least fivefold. And then also maybe mechanization, having tractors and also a proper means of transportation because our roads can get really tricky during rainy seasons. Mm. So if we can get proper transportation, we can really go far. Uh, I hope in the next five, ten years, we're going to have more than two hundred acres for sure and having Ubuntu farm and gardens all over South Sudan. That's, that's a big why. dream. Yes. And everything boils down to you. You're the, you're the main person behind it. You yes. don't need investors. I would love to have investors and that's why I am here actually. Would love to have stakeholders. You know we're very open to having other people join us in this project. So if you're in your room watching me right now, I mean do me a favor, send her a message and if you would love to invest in a farm, talk to her personally not me. How many hectares or acres do you have in here? Uh, right now we have seven acres but we're really working to expanding it very soon. That is our goal. We really want to increase our production and expand our, our acres. Is this the only farm that you got or you got a, another farm that I know nothing about? Uh, we do have another, uh, another farm in Uganda. That is where my entire agriculture journey started. Wow. Yes. And how many acres are there? Uh, those are 12 acres. So 12 plus 7 is like 19 
Hey, kiss. I don't. I, I mean, forgive my manners. Can you tell me how old you are? Yes. <laughs> I am 28 years. Whoa. Are you kidding me? I am 28 years. Yo, we, we have so many young Africans out there. What is your final message to Africans out there? My final message to Af continental Africans, Africans in the country, again, like I said, dare and challenge to be different. You don't have to follow the path that everybody follows. You know, you can be different, carve your way out of life and still make a great impact in the country and in the, in the continent. For my African brothers and sisters in the diaspora, I am actually telling you that you are welcome to come back home. Come back home to Africa and experience it yourself. You know, you should not focus so much on the, uh, on the portrayal of the media of the Africa um, that they are showing you. The Africa we are in today is growing it is developing come and see it for yourself there's so many opportunities that you can get and that you can make a living out of so please do come we are here we are living evidence that it can be done right here in Africa that you also if you want to come we are here to give you the tools and the guidance so that you can also start your journey so you're welcome come back and taste Africa for yourself I, I'm really lack of what <laughs> <laughs> really lack of white. God damn. <laughs> is it worth it to be a farmer? It is absolutely worth it. I could not take it any other way because the impact is amazing. You know, you are among the people that are like you and they appreciate the work that, you, that you're doing. And you also really know that you're contributing directly to some of the biggest problems in this, in this continent, Who are the food insecurity. Who are the consumers of your vegetables? We do supply hotels, big hotels. We do supply the market, some of the markets here. We also do uh, deliver door-to-door -door delivery to households. They don't get shocked knowing that this is coming from their own country? Actually, they do every time. And that is the thing that I want to impart in them, that we can actually grow our own. We can feed ourselves. Why are they shocked? Because we are so used to uh, depending on other countries to doing things for us, you know. So we don't believe in our own. And that is the narrative, the colonization narrative that we have adopted as a people. And we want to change that. If you have the chance to stay <laughs> in Africa, what will it be? It will be the mindset of the people, the mindset of our leaders and the young people. You know, we just need to believe in ourselves that we have everything that it takes you know that we are amazing people we are great people Africa our motherland is a beautiful place to be you know the funny thing is that whenever you're in Africa the feeling of of, of, of acceptance and being with your own people. I don't have to worry about uh, racial profiling or being harassed on the streets like I did in America. Yeah, you know, you racial profiling happens in the West, you know that. So just being with your own people and doing the things that you love and seeing it making an impact is amazing. I have to create this channel whether you like <laughs> it or not. You know, we don't have a name yet, but the link will be in the description. Do me a favor, go there, subscribe and be part of her family. You know what, what are you going to do on the channel for us? I am going to be showing you amazing things on agriculture trends in, in, in our garden and in South Sudan as a whole, as we expand and actually really improve agriculture and food security in there South Sudan. There are so Sudan. many young South Sudanese who never grew up here. Yes. They grew up all over the place. Yes. But now they don't want to come back. Yes. If you want to tell them to come back, what would that message be? The message would be the country is open for you to come. Really do come. Again, the imagery that is shown uh, to you out there is not the truth. Come and experience it yourself. We are here. We are willing to help you. We are willing to guide you. You know, we are willing to connect with you and show you the way we also started here. Trust me, this is my best video in South Sudan. Like, I'm, I'm so emotional right now. I don't even know what to tell you. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. <laughs> right here in the farm. Come back and connect to nature. And you know what? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and be part of this awesome family. I'll see you in the next one. Aya Maya. Peace out.